You know what, Billy? What was your earliest memory of professional wrestling? Was it ECW or was it something else? No, no. I uh, when I was a little kid, uh, I, I, I my mother had some uh, issues and was hospitalized, and so I went to live with my grandfather who was in his sixties, and my great grandmother who was in her eighties and barely spoke any English. She was from Belgium, and they watched professional wrestling on Saturday morning. So I'm four years old and I'm watching Dick the Bruiser, Nick Bockwinkle, Bobby Heenan. Baron Von Raschke, The Crusher, Vern Gagne. So the very first experiences I had with, were with these stone cold legends of professional wrestling. I didn't even know what I was watching, much less that I was watching these legends. So that very much formed my idea of what wrestling was about, the toughness, the larger than life personalities, but particularly a very Chicago style version of toughness, mostly embodied, of course, by Dick the Bruiser, who in many ways was the template for what came later with, say, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I mean that respectfully. Uh, if you look at footage of, of uh, Dick the Bruiser from the 60s, he's so, a far, he's so far ahead of where everybody is in America at that time. Ahead of his time. Wait, I mean, he, he basically is Japan before Japan. You know what I mean? If you, if you know what I mean by that reference. So that's what I grew up on. And at some point, like you do, you know, you get all weird and goth and start playing guitar. And you think wrestling's not for me. And then uh, I kind of walked away from it. I didn't think I'd be interested. And of course, when Cindy Lauper was doing stuff in, uh, in you know, WWF and all this stuff, I paid kind of sort of attention, but I saw it as something in the rearview mirror. I never imagined that I would one day be backstage and see you at a, at a, at a WWF or E or whatever it was at that point show. Uh, a young John Cena, first time he ever went to a WWE house show. I talked to Stone Cold uh, Mankind. Triple H, China, you know what I mean? The Rock. I mean, oh, so yeah. my first experience is uh, behind the scenes of professional wrestling. I was treated so well and so respectfully by everybody. Some people were fans. Some people were just nice. Some people I still have relationships with. So I was like, wow, this is a lot cooler a world behind here than I would have ever imagined. The people are a lot smarter than I would have imagined. Like, there's a street sense to them that doesn't always come across in their characters. And as you know, Kurt, sometimes the best heels are really great baby faces behind the scenes and oh, vice yes. versa. Oh, yeah, yes. And and so, you know, I started to get to know people in the business and and just slowly got sucked in like the mob to, you know, and as you know, once you're in, you can never get out. <laughs> um, so here we are all these years That's later, being in the NWA, which is a whole nother craziness. So I, I got to ask, because you, you started talking about AWA, a lot of the wrestlers from the AWA era that I really got into wrestling. I saw some AWA early WWF in the early eighties, and then it was Jim Crockett promotions and NWA. That was the four horsemen, everything that went on there. And as you were telling your story of your fandom, you know, you were going through, you know, different years, you saw the Cindy Lauper era, and then you kind of fast forwarded to uh, Mick Foley and the rock and all. 